Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Freehold Regional High School Virtual College Fair. Thank you so much for joining us. We are really excited you're here. Before we get started, we do have a few housekeeping items to note. First, if you have any questions at all, feel free to submit those through the Q&A button. You can type in your questions to the presenters at any time. You are muted and your video is off. The panelists can't see or hear you. This is one of many college presentations being offered tonight. Feel free to sign up for more sessions at the same place where you registered for this one. And lastly, all, all sessions are being recorded and will be available early next week at strivescan.com backslash F-R-H-S-D. We are currently in session E4, where my mouse is circling at the moment. And this is also the same order of presentations. So without further ado, I'll get out of the way and introduce our first representative from Emory, Emory Riddle Aeronautical University. Hi, everybody. I'm going to share my screen. My name is Dana Carlin, and I am here representing Emory Riddle Aeronautical University. And we actually have two campuses located, one in Daytona Beach, Florida, which is the one that I am representing, and another one in Prescott, Arizona. So um, welcome, and I'm so glad that all of you could join us today. So um, again, my name is Dana Carlin, and I'm actually regional. So that means that I live right here in New Jersey, and I actually live in Manalapan by coincidence. So I am probably your neighbor. Um, so I will put my personal uh, work email in the chat when I'm done speaking. So if any of you ever want to touch base in person, I would be happy to meet locally on Route 9 or anywhere, you know, that is easy for you guys. So feel free to reach out to me. So we are a true STEM aviation based university. Embry and Riddle were actually two men that started a flight school in um, Miami and then moved it over to Daytona Beach when it grew. So we are the number one aerospace engineering school in the country by US News and World Report, and this would be our 20th year in a row. So we are the first and the only college of, of security and intelligence, and that program is located in Arizona. So we do have an aerospace physiology program that's pretty new for Daytona Beach, and that is actually a pre-med program with an aviation spin on it. So we are an ABET accredited university, which is something that you definitely want to look for. So graduates yield among the highest return and investment in the nation with us, and we are a top ranked university in Arizona and Florida for the highest level of quality and affordability. So Daytona Beach versus Prescott, what's the difference? So Daytona, Daytona does have about 7,000 students where Prescott has about 3,000, but our average class sizes are pretty similar, about 24 or 25. Between the two campuses, we have about 350 clubs, organizations. We have about 16 uh, fraternities, sororities, which is something that you can take advantage of, of if you want, but there's definitely no pressure to do so. Um, we have about 10 to 15 uh, intercollegiate sports uh, on each campus, and we are a Division II. We're NCAA in Daytona and NAIA in Arizona. So we pretty much in Daytona have most of your traditional college sports, but not football. But we actually do have a competitive flight team. So that's really um, something that the kids truly, truly get involved in, and it's really competitive. So ROTC has a huge presence on our campus. We do have all four branches in Daytona, and we do have Army and Air Force in Prescott, Arizona. So um, Daytona Beach is actually located 10 minutes from that famous beach that we always hear about here in New Jersey and New York. And it is about 45 minutes from the Orlando theme parks and we do give discounted tickets. And we're right near the Kennedy Space Center. So it's a really great location. And if you are interested in flight, we actually are adjacent to the airport. So it's really great that, you know, some schools that offer flight, you have to get in a car and drive a half an hour to get to your plane. With us, you could literally roll out of bed in your dorm and you're right in your aircraft. 
So Arizona is really um, very outdoorsy. If you're interested in like rock climbing, hiking, biking, stuff like that, it's a great place for you. So outcomes, so 94% of our graduates within a year, they're working, they're working in the field that they are practicing, you know, in, in our institution. We have a very, very involved career services from day one. The minute you step foot on our campus, you're gonna be involved with career services. We have over 140,000 alumni that are involved from, you know, right from the get-go. They come in for our fall, um, career expo and they get involved with handshakes. So we have, we have agencies that only recruit our students. We're very involved with every airline, with NASA. So it, it's something that's really, really important to us to build these relationships with our alumni and these agencies. So our application process is super, super easy. It opens up directly on our website the summer before your senior year. So we're not on the Common App or the Coalition App or anything like that. We are right on our website. So you just go right on there and you can just fill it out. And the only requirement that we have is that your high school sends over an official transcript to us. Everything else is completely optional. We've been test optional for about five years. So that's not a COVID thing for us, but um, whatever you do send to us, we will look at, but as I said, it is completely optional. So letters of recommendation are optional, test scores, essays, but if you do send it, we will absolutely look at it. Mm -hmm. Our average GPA is about a 3.8. Um, so it is pretty up there, but we are looking at your math, you know, math science. So we're looking for that algebra one, algebra two, pre-calc, trig, depending on what major you're applying for. If you're looking at our, one of our engineering programs, we're looking for that physics and, you know, definitely, you know, things that can support the program that we have. So um, financial aid, over 90% of our students are getting some type of aid. ROTC offers extensive, unbelievable scholarships. Um, they are separate from what Embry-Riddle itself does offer. So any, anybody above a 3.0 is automatically qualifies for our merit scholarship. So that's great. And um, FAFSA, obviously external scholarships. We take anything that you can find outside of um, Embry Riddle, so anything within your community, your school district, or anything. So, thank you for taking the time for meeting with me, and I will put my email contact in the chat for you. So, um, again, thanks for coming, and I will then hand it over to our next presenter. Awesome, thank you. The next representative is from Pittsburgh Institute of Aeronautics. Hello all, my name is Brandon with PIA, the Pittsburgh Institute of Aeronautics. Following the theme of earlier, I feel like I should also share, I grew up in Bridgewater, New Jersey, and also went to high school there and live right over the border in Pennsylvania now. So somewhat local, spend some time around y'all as well. But diving right into what I wanna to share tonight, simply stated PIA prepares and propels our graduates into careers in the fields of aviation, aerospace, and beyond technologies by giving them a hands-on educational experience by working on actual aircraft in our on-campus hangars. A brief history on PIA is we have actually been in existence for over 90 years. We were founded out of the Glenn Curtis and Orville Wright Flying Service, and that's the same Orville Wright that was the first in flight of the Wright brothers in 1903 in Kitty Hawk, North Carolina. PIA was founded in 1929. PIA graduates go on to work at NASA, SpaceX, Aerojet Rocketdyne, the top aerospace organizations, as well as commercial airlines, American, Boeing, Piedmont, Delta, technology organizations like Pratt & Whitney, Lockheed Martin, Disney will hire our graduates to actually work on and design roller coasters, as well as all different, different streams in the aeronautical industry and even outside of it. So many opportunities to explore through education in aviation, aerospace, and the technical skills that we can provide at PIA. One question I always get from students is, what does it look like to be a student at PIA? Well, that is a great question, something absolutely worth exploring while looking into schools. Nothing wrong with this, but we are not a traditional four-year school where you're gonna see huge lecture halls. What we are is a hands-on education facility where 60 to 70% of the time, our students are getting to live out the lessons that they learn by working on actual aircraft, planes, jets, helicopters, in, like I said, our on-campus hangar. 
we find this not only properly prepares our students for the industry, but ends up having our students very much find enjoyment in their education and really thrive in our program. But beyond pictures, I would love to give you a sneak peek of what it looks like to be a student at PIA as this is essentially our students' classroom. As you saw at the bottom of that last slide, we are Forbes number one two-year trade school, three years running. And that is something, of course, I'm proud of our school for, but is an amazing foot in the door that allows our students and then graduates to get some of the top positions within aviation, aerospace, and beyond. A little deeper dive where I want to show you some of the actual aircraft that our students get to work on. So at PIA, we are extremely specialized. We actually offer two programs, and that is aviation maintenance technology and aviation electronics technology. We are the Pittsburgh Institute of Aeronautics, but we also have branch campuses in Youngstown, Ohio, Hagerstown, Maryland, and right off the beach in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. So our two programs that we offer, aviation maintenance technology and avionics, aviation electronics, our aviation maintenance technology can be completed as a 21 month associate degree in specialized technology at our main campus in Pittsburgh, or for those students who wanna come in and just focus on the technical side of things as a 16 month certification program at any of our branch campuses. Aviation maintenance focuses on the physicality of the aircraft, wings, landing gear, engine, while our avionics program only offered at our Pittsburgh campus as a 21 month associate in specialized technology degree program uh, is only offered at our Pittsburgh campus. And that I always say is the brains of the aircraft. Both of our programs end with our students having a chance to test for and obtain their FAA, Federal Aviation Administration uh, license or their Federal Communication Commission uh, certification, depending on the program, or we can actually do a dual major. Right there, I'll put an option. If any of you are interested, you can go on pia.edu forward slash learn more, scan that QR code and request us to invite you to a personal tour, send you an invitation to one of our virtual open houses, or simply answer some questions one-on-one -on -one and talk to you about some further insight on what we could provide to help you make the best educational decision. I wish every single one of you the best and brightest future in your educational exploration. So can everything that all these great reps have to say tonight so you can make the best decision for you and the path that is right for you. Thank you for your time. Thank you, we really appreciate it. Just a friendly reminder that if you have any questions at all to so feel free to submit those through the Q&A. Our representatives are here and available to answer any questions that you have. And if you have a specific question to also note the school name. The next representative is from Johnson & Wales University. Hi everyone, thanks for joining us tonight. Give me a minute here to share my screen. So my name is Valerie Smith. Um, I will share in the chat box the names and contact information of my three colleagues who cover New Jersey as regional reps. I'm covering for them tonight, which, you know, we have great teamwork that goes on, but um, I'm happy to answer any questions that you drop in the chat tonight as well. Okay, so 
At Johnson & Wales University, we actually offer two campus locations, our flagship campus in Providence, Rhode Island, as well as our Charlotte, North Carolina campus, um, also known as the city. You can jump right into your day one freshman year. So while we're not a tech school, we definitely believe in the value of hands-on education. So no matter what your major, again, you're gonna dig right into it and get your hands dirty in that field day one. Traditionally, we look more like a traditional college campus, a typical four-year uh, college campus that you might envision um, in terms of the, the structure of the school. Uh, while you're there, you're going to obviously learn from the best. We do have smaller class sizes, so our uh, faculty will mentor you along the way. They're your advisors, and they bring a lot of networking experience to the table with them. This is just a handful of options that we offer. We actually have over 80 majors. Um, we were founded in 1914 by two women as a business school, so kind of a, a especially in 2021, I feel like that's always such an, an inspirational part of our history. But over 80 majors, we have six colleges within the university. So we have offer the College of Business, of course, the College of Culinary, uh, Co College of Food Innovation and Technology, College of Hospitality Management, our College of Engineering and Design, College of Arts and Sciences, as well as our College of Health and Wellness. So really there's something for everyone. Internships are required, both your sophomore as well as your senior year. Study abroad programs also offered. A little bit different this year due to COVID, but we are seeing things changing for the better come the fall where it looks a little bit more normal. Um, and so uh, study abroad is optional, highly encouraged, but optional nonetheless. We offer over 150 clubs and organizations for you to get involved in. So whether you want to continue with something that you love doing during high school, like for example, sports or a particular club, we may offer that, but we also offer a lot of new items for you to explore. Things like Greek life, which would include sororities and fraternities. In terms of residential life or living on our campuses, I'll give you three quick highlights that students often love hearing about, even though they don't really initially think to ask me about them. And that is yes to cars on campus all four years, yes to pet friendly dorm options. There are some limitations, but yes, you can bring your pet. And yes to co-ed dorm rooms, also an option. In terms of athletics, we are D3. This highlights the athletic teams that we offer, and beside each one, you'll see the campuses that offer that particular sport. I do encourage you, if you're an athlete, to get that conversation started right now, spring of junior year. Um, while I wouldn't say it's too late necessarily for seniors, really, if you're a junior that's joining us tonight, um, this is just as important to get this rolling as it is your college search process. Feel free to take a screenshot of this or any of my slides moving forward. Um, if you feel like they'll help you as you navigate. Uh, but this is a, a great way. It's basically like submitting your athletic resume to our coaches. And it's a great way to get that conversation started. In terms of affording uh, your education, we do offer merit-based scholarships that we award the students upon acceptance. If you're involved in organizations such as FCCLA, which I know is going on tonight in New Jersey, that's one of the reasons I'm covering for my colleagues. Um, but uh, FCCLA, ProStart, TSA, HOSA, DECA, anything like that, we offer scholarships because of your high school involvement in those organizations, and they continue on the collegiate level. Certainly FAFSA is the uh, starting gate for financial aid, and then there's also work-study options on campus, competitive awarding, and even, um, you know, what we call outside scholarships from other institutions. And here's my gift to you tonight, a way to jumpstart you on that scholarship search. If awarded, these can be used at the school of your choice. I encourage you to visit. Many schools are still offering uh, virtual visits this year. Um, we've really ramped up our offerings because of COVID and the limitations with traveling to visit campus. However, a lot of those limitations are starting to slowly be lifted. So we are offering in-person visits as well with a few restrictions due to COVID. The application process, you can apply directly through our website at jwu.edu or through Common App. It's free to apply and re we require your application as well as your transcript. 
We are test optional. You can also send in uh, an essay as well as recommendation letters should you choose and we'll review those. November 1st is our early action deadline with March 1st being our rolling admissions deadline. For current juniors, the application process for your senior year will open the end of August. Um, if you'd like to stay in touch after tonight, you can text the word Wildcats to 75192 or make use of the QR code that's on your screen. This is my direct contact information, but again, I'll drop in the chat the uh, contact information for my three New Jersey colleagues so that you can reach out to them directly. Best of luck to you in your college search. And again, thanks for joining us tonight. Very helpful information. Thank you. Thanks. The next representative is from Vermont Technical College. Hi, everybody. Can you see that all right? Yeah. All right, cool then. So hi, I'm Savannah Simons. I'm the Assistant Director of Admissions at Vermont Tech. We are this small college with big outcomes, and I will tell you why. Of course, um, here we go. Um, so but first, I'll get into where do you learn best. Uh, we do have two main campuses. The first is Randolph Center, which is right in the middle of the state um, of Vermont right here. Um, then we do have our Williston campus, um, which is up near Burlington, Vermont, um, in our, near one of our international airports. Uh, so Randolph Center is a little bit more urban. Um, it's rural, or excuse me, it's, sorry, it's more rural. It sits on about 500 acres and it has about 800 students. Um, this is actually a picture of it behind me during the springtime. It has a dining hall and sports Sports grill along with your um, our own ski hill rope tow and a place to fabricate your own skis. Uh, there's clubs and intramurals and varsity athletics on this campus. Williston campus is the one that's a bit more urban. Uh, Burlington is uh, the largest city in Vermont. If you have not been, I absolutely encourage you to come visit us. We are open for out-of-state visitors now. Um, it's close to, Lake, the Williston campus is close to Lake Champlain, um, and it's a little bit more tight-knit. There's about 500 students on that campus and about 50 to 100 that live in the dorm rooms. Um, so most of that, most of the students on that campus are commuter students. Um, there are clubs and intramural sports on this campus as well. And if you want to participate in varsity athletics, you just have to make that drive down to Randolph. And there's all those other green dots that you might see around the um, kind of like the outside of the state. Those are our distance uh, nursing sites. So we do have a very large nursing program and um, those are specific campus sites dedicated to nurses. Uh, so we are a really small college. Our total enrollment is only about 1,600. Our average class size is also really low, about 15. Um, and we have 45 hands-on programs. Um, and we are a technical college, so we do uh, focus on the hands-on application um, of, learn, you know, um, of education, excuse me. And um, you know, you really are going to be in a small class size where you know your professor, your professor knows you. We don't have lectures. We don't have large lecture halls. Um, you know, in your English classes, you might be with, you know, 20, 25 students, but in your specialized, like up on the top right, you'll see an electronics course. There is probably about eight to 10 students in that course specifically. But we do have big outcomes. Um, do not underestimate our small, small size. 100% um, of our programs are offered um, career focused and hands on. Um, we have an overall 99% placement rate with, and the highest in, we are rated highest in the state for return on investment. So not only is our tuition fairly low, um, but our um, your expected salary after you graduate is fairly high. So that's, of course, you want to be able to get not only a job after college, but a high paying job. Hopefully, um, we do have some really wonderful employers. So we uh, we employ people local to Vermont, national um, across the U.S. and international across the world. So IBM, JetBlue, Caterpillar, um, uh, Burton Snowboards as well. If you're into snowboarding, um, and you can learn about where our graduates have are working um, at that website link down there. Um, you can see what they're where they're working and what they're doing. Um, for student support, um, so TRIO is a um, wonderful program that 75% of our students are eligible for. So it's um, just an extra support system. Uh, you can visit vtc.edu slash TRIO to learn more. Um, we do offer the Center for Academic Success for all students, and which of course has tutoring, time management, counseling, access to accommodations. Um, career services, of course, will connect you with internships, um, but your professors can also do that as well. They are professionals in their field and they share their, they still have their connections in their field and they can definitely connect you with whatever you want to do. Um, so we are organized into four schools. 
We do offer uh, two year degrees, four year degrees, and one master's degree. Um, you'll notice anything with an AE is a two year associate. Anything, of course, BS is a bachelor's degree, a four year degree. Um, let's see, this is our, our engineering and computing school. I like to call it the school of money because these are all some very high paying careers. Um, we also have the School of Nursing and Health Professions. I mentioned nursing was our largest program. Um, it, we do offer it as um, a practical nursing, which is a first year certificate, associate's degree, and a bachelor's degree. And respiratory therapy, of course, which is becoming huge this year because of COVID, unfortunately. Um, business, of course, professional studies and management is another one of our schools with business uh, professional pilot technology, if you're looking to become a pilot, um, entrepreneurship, and of course, automotive and diesel technology. And of course, you can't talk about Vermont without talking about agriculture. There's the agribusiness, diversified agriculture, uh, vet tech, and landscape contracting. Um, no, no one tells you this, but you can go into the barn to pet the baby calves. It's quite great, especially if you're struggling with some stress. So uh, we do have varsity athletics are affiliated with the Yankee Small College Conference and the United States Collegiate Athletic Association. Uh, we have soccer, basketball, cross country, track and field, and esports is coming soon. Um, I, it was a club, they were just, they're just like trying to apply for varsity status. So um, application information, we are on the Common App or the Vermont Tech App. Uh, there are some specific requirements depending on what um, major you're going for, but more or less, if, um, as long as you're not applying to like a health major, we would just need the application and your official transcripts. Uh, letters of recommendation are optional for most majors, as is the essay and test scores. Um, there is rolling admissions for most of our programs, except for the ones listed here, nursing, dental hygiene, radi radiologic sciences, and veterinary technology. We'll have a December 1st priority deadline. Um, you can, as I said before, you can come up and visit us in Vermont. Um, just log on to vtc.edu slash events to find out how to visit us. Um, schedule a time to come on, come on up. Um, you can also reach us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and Snapchat. Um, and again, my information's at the bottom here. I'll also post that in the chat shortly. Um, but please drop something into the q and A. I would love to hear from you. Um, uh, no question is too silly. So uh, thank you so much for uh, for listening to my speech and uh, I'll kick it off to the next presenter. Thank you, we really appreciate it. And as was stated, if you have any questions at all, feel free to submit those through the Q&A. Um, we are here to answer any questions that you have about the college application process, or even if you have a specific question for a school, please note that as well in your question. Our last representative, but certainly not least, is from Lawrence Technological University. Hi, everybody. My name is Patty Rockwood. Um, and we also have Janet, um, Jane Franco, she's on chat right now. And as I'm just starting to share my screen, I'm not sure if, oh, my screen went away. Or my picture went away. So I'm just gonna talk. And we're, Lawrence Technological University is actually in Southfield, Michigan. It's considered one of the Midwest tech centers. It's most dynamic business and tech areas. Uh, we're about 30 minutes north of Detroit. We have about 3,000 students. Um, average class size is about 15. So we're a small private university. We have uh, four different colleges. We have an engineering college. We have arts and science college. We have architecture and design college. And we have business and information technology college. And we have many majors in each one. Um, our biggest majors are mechanical engineering with several specialties. Civil engineering is also big. Our architecture program, we have um, a joint bachelor master's architecture, so you can get licensed as an architect at the end. Um, and then back over in engineering, but kind of combined, we have architectural engineering, and that's also a bachelor master's so that you can get licensed as an architect when you're done. We also have lots of arts and sciences. We have um, graphic design, we have interior design uh, under business. We have several business majors, information technology, we have a few, I think, unusual uh, majors. One of them is transportation design. And for all of you students who have been drawing in your notebooks all your life and drawing cars and different vehicles, this is what it is. It's art transportation. Um, so that, that major is a small major, but the students that are in it are, um, 
I believe there were still 100% get placed before they graduate. So it's a great program. We also have audio engineering technology, which is a great program for anybody interested in sound in anything. Everything from movies to putting the sound in automobiles to buildings and different things like that. We're also, um, we also have game design, which is getting very popular. And under computer science, we have game software development. So you can either be on the computer side or you can be on the art side for that. All our courses are taught by faculty. And again, I mentioned that we have small class size. We also believe in theory and practice. And what that means is you're not only gonna be in the classroom, but you're gonna be hands-on, um, either working on projects or doing research, starting right as a freshman. So you're gonna go right through from freshman up and be you know, doing hands-on and actually seeing and working on what you're gonna do with your career. We have internships and um, co-ops, generally starting, I would say end of sophomore year. Um, and a lot of those are paid. So, so that's really helpful you know, when you're trying to figure out how to finance college and everything. Cost, including room and board, is about forty-five thousand to about forty-seven thousand. We have a lot, a lot of we have a lot of scholarships. Everything from academic merit scholarships. We have uh, we have financial needs scholarships. We have private scholarships. And I imagine I know that we're generally talking to New Jersey students, but with virtual, they could be from anywhere in the country. But we have an out-of-state scholarship for students that apply. And that's a $5,000 scholarship. And there's also a lot of private scholarships available. For housing, we have four different types of housing. Um, what admissions thinks is kind of cool though, the, the, newest, um, the newest housing residence hall is actually um, freshmen get to live in it. So um, we are excited about that. And it even has a workout room in the, in the first floor, um, a shared kitchen, if you wanna bring your bicycle, there's a room to put your bicycle in. Um, and it's, I don't even think it's five minutes from walking into campus to your classrooms. Um, and actually all the residence halls are pretty close. Probably the furthest away is 10 minutes by a shuttle and everything. Um, so everything's pretty easy to reach within a few minutes. We also have over 60 clubs and organizations. Some of them are academic, some of them are just for fun. Uh, some of them are more career oriented, um, like we have Blue Devil Motorsports for students in the mechanical engineering um, that, that want to build cars. And we have, um, we have some Baja racing, um, one of the ones that run on, electric, on electricity and everything. So there's all different types to do. And you don't even have to be in engineering to do it. If you just are interested in it, you can go help out and do it. Um, like I said, we have a lot of academic ones. So there's an engineering club, architectural, um, business clubs. And then, um, like I said, just fun ones. I think um, one year they decided to have a, um, a cheese sandwich one where they grilled, um, grilled cheese sandwiches and they met once a month and they just made all kinds of different ones and everything. We also have sports. We're a part of NAIA, which is equivalent to NCAA Division III. The big difference in ours are, except for our ice hockey teams, students who are in those sports can get scholarships. And that also includes students that are in the cheerleading, um, the band, anything for the spirit area. There's also partial scholarships for them. Admissions requirement, we're only admissions, and um, we're also test optional for the seniors and juniors. Average GPA last year was a 3.4, and um, so we are start. We usually start to take applications in August for the next year and everything. So we hope that you can visit. If you want to contact us, like I said, Jane's on the chat, and thanks for listening. Thank you. We do have some time left. And so we're going to go ahead now at this time to pivot into our Q&A portion of the session. So I'll ask and invite our presenters at this time to go ahead and turn on their cameras. 
to unmute themselves and to answer the first question here, which is what advice would you give someone going through the college search process? Again, what advice would you give someone going through the college search process? And if you all can answer in the same order in which you all presented it. So I would say I've been on both sides of this. I have two kids myself that are in college. Um, so I've done this on the other side. And I would say just to take advantage, unfortunately, of the circumstances, if you can get like we we've been offering tours in person this whole time. But if you can't get to a school, these platforms are amazing and keep an open mind. There's so many schools that I've never heard of before. So you might be on one of these and be like, hey, you know, that's great. I never heard of this. Let me look into some more information and see what else I could find. So I just think that, that there are so many opportunities out there to take advantage of and, and so many schools that you probably never ever would have even thought of. So just keep an open mind. Great advice. I'll kind of piggyback on that with uh, my advice would be empower yourself through educational exploration, which you've done tonight, but perhaps look into a community college, a two year trade school, a four year school, and really empower yourself to which path is perfect for you, because there is no set correct educational and career path that is just overall correct for everyone. It's really identifying aspects of you, yourself, your personality and your goals and how that school and program can fit into those. So look into your options, whether it be through a Google search, a virtual tour, or even physically touring the campus if possible. I would encourage you to do that in multiple avenues. My other quick one is, perhaps make a separate email just for your college things. So things don't get caught up in little ads you're getting from Target or something you bought. And you can focus in on this email and say, oh, these three colleges wrote back, I'm gonna stay on top of that. Where we know with some of the junk mail and things we get, things can get lost. So that might be an easier tool to stay organized through your process of searching. All right, so I think my advice would be that uh, it's easy to feel overwhelmed when you really shouldn't be. Take advantage of reps like ourselves who are joining you tonight. Reach out to us. We dropped our information in the bottom. So you can always text us, email us, and we're happy to help any way we can. That's, that's what we're here to do. But the biggest piece is ultimately keep an eye on the prize. It's going to come down to two things, fit and finances. Fit most especially for you because you're essentially looking for a new second home throughout all of this but is it financially breathable or doable for you as a family? Money is out there. So just as you're starting your search now, and especially if you're a junior, you want to at the same time balance it with looking for outside resources where if you're awarded those scholarships, and I showed you some on my screen tonight, they can be used at the school of your choice. So if you're awarded those, you could come to any of this, these schools you're seeing tonight or whatever one you decide to commit to down the line. So good luck to you. And I wish you well. I think I want to um, echo what a combination of what Dana and Brandon have said um, is to just keep an open mind, especially about your future. Um, something I always like to point out is that every single panelist tonight is a, an admissions counselor of some kind, but we probably all came from a very different educational background. Um, we were actually discussing it a little bit before um, you all came on. Um, so there's no one path to get to where you want to go and the destination might even change after a while and that is okay um, if you need to transfer majors if you need to transfer schools um, many of the um, schools that we talked that are here tonight have multiple locations um, maybe that specific location just isn't right for you um, you know keep keep your options and your mind open for sure yeah and i just kind of want to um follow up on that is keep your options open as long as you can. Um, you get your acceptances first and sometimes your financial aid packages take a while to come. And you might say, oh, good, I got money from this one school, but you haven't heard from other schools. So you want to wait until you get all of them so you can sit and compare them. Of course, if one of them was your dream school and you got accepted there and you said, I'm not looking at anything else, and that works too. Awesome. Thanks for all the great advice. We're going to try to see if we can squeeze in.
one more here. And that question is, what is your favorite event or tradition on campus? What is your favorite event or tradition on campus? So when the rockets launch at Cape Canaveral, all <laughs> the kids in Daytona Beach yeah. take off for the beach and they line Daytona Beach to watch the rockets launch. So it's pretty cool because our location has such a great viewing um, place for that. So that's a really nice tradition. Brandon? I think ours might be, or mine might be, the AMC competition, the aerospace maintenance competition. Each one of my campus has students who team up with instructors. We send a team. Uh, two years ago, Atlanta, Georgia, Orlando, Florida. It's not only a great personal experience, but it's like the Olympics of aerospace engineering, maintenance, repair, where our students can compete, have a great life experience and something amazing to put on their resume while they're still a student. So get a taste of the industry while it's not only for colleges, networking with some amazing organizations like NASA, Boeing, SpaceX. So something they get to bring pride to our university and have their world get a little bit bigger in a really fun way. If you're not familiar, check it out on YouTube. But Beyond My School, it's just a great event to look into, especially if you're a technical-minded person interested in that path. So I think for Johnson and Wales, I would have to say um, it's an event we call Ignite the Night. And I don't want to share a whole lot of details because it is our traditional way of welcoming our incoming freshmen. But I think after moving in and being nervous about waiting for classes to start the following day. Um, I think it really does help students feel as though they are officially now part of the Wildcat family. Their college experience is really kicked off after this event. And the entire college campus is essentially welcoming those freshmen to the Wildcat family. And it's followed on the flip side with another, a similar uh, event that's traditional for our seniors just prior to graduation. So. Um, they, they end their experience in a similar fashion to the way they started four years prior as freshmen. So that's about all I'll share for now <laughs> on what happens that night. My favorite's probably got to be uh, homecoming. So um, it is a giant event. We've mixed homecoming for um, it's like a for the new students. Um, it's also parents weekend and alumni weekend. So everybody is on campus, networking, mingling, playing festival uh, carnival games. Um, we also we're the Green Knights, so we also have a knights feast, and you'll see people walking around with like honking big turkey legs, which is always a lot of fun. So um, that is probably my favorite event. Uh, Patricia. Well, I think for me, because I'm a regional, so I'm not on campus all the time, um, they have lots of different fun events. And, and, and one time I was there and I got to go to Ford Day. Uh, you have to remember that we're in Detroit and where we're General Motors, Ford, um, Chrysler, Toyota, and, and Nissan are and everything. So I was there for Ford Day where Ford brings a lot of their newly designed cars and a lot of information about the cars that aren't even built yet and everything. And, and, and then there's food and, and there's food and there's entertainment. Um, and our Blue Devil Motorsports, they bring all their cars so we get to hear all about them. Um, so it's kind of a mix of academic because it's uh, about career and fun. And, and, and I wanted to do it and I happened to be there one year when they did it. Awesome. Uh, great. Thank you. Um, what a great Q&A session. Um, appreciate all our presenters um, just um, giving us great advice and sharing your favorite traditions or events on campus. Um, I have to say that's always my favorite question because that's what truly makes each school unique. Um, and so thank you for, uh, again, sharing with us tonight and for being here. And thank you to each of you for joining us. We have reached the conclusion of this session, but as we close, there'll be a very quick four question survey that will appear on your browser. If you don't mind taking a moment to fill that out for us, uh, your feedback will be really helpful. And there are more sessions happening tonight. So feel free to sign up for more sessions like this one at the same place where you registered. And also this recording will be available early next week. All sessions are being recorded and will be available at strivescan.com backslash F-R-H-S 
D. Again, thank you all and have a great night. Thank you. Bye-bye.